get back It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a beach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of inspiredinsider.com where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, we have, when I say extremely impressive entrepreneur and entrepreneur, that's an understatement. You could look him up on Wikipedia to prove it. But Jay Samet is a leading technology innovator who's raised over $800 million for startups. He sold companies to Fortune 500 firms, taken companies public. He's partnered with some of the world's biggest brands like Coca-Cola, Microsoft, Apple, just to name a few. And everyone from the Pope to the president to LinkedIn call on Jay to orchestrate innovation. He's also built global divisions for Universal Studios, EMI, and Sony, and he's the author of Disrupt You, Master Master Personal Transformation, Seize Opportunity, and Thrive in the Era of Endless Innovation. Hold that up again, Jay. Thank you so much for joining me. Good morning. Pleasure to be here. You know, since it's Inspired Insider, Jay, I always like to ask, um, what's been the lowest point? And then how do you Ah. push through the tough times? So... Being an entrepreneur nowadays, you have crowdfunding, you have VCs, it's an established thing. Going back 30 years ago, not so much so. Uh, It it was a new world. It wasn't guaranteed that everybody was going to go into high tech. And so I funded my first company off of my credit cards. Probably the worst thing you can do, you know, 20, 30% interest rates, penalties, the whole bit. And the lowest moment was when the guy rings your doorbell to repossess your car. Mm. And you're like... I need my car, I, da, 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 da. and the humanity of that person to, you know, give me a break, mm. you know, so that I could continue. Uh, you know, you sometimes bet the farm, yeah. and you take risks, and sometimes you take risks that you shouldn't. And so part of the reason for doing Disrupt You is to show people other alternatives to putting themselves in that level of jeopardy yeah. that they might not have imagined. You know, I talk a lot about OPM in the book, other people's money. Right. But there are people that will give a startup money that don't want any of your equity and don't want the money back. Yeah. And it's because your startup can help them solve their problem. And so, yeah, no, it, it's not all, it's not all, ooh, happy days, you know. Right. Everybody, everybody looks at, at the Michael Jordan, you know, you know, slam dunk, and everybody looks at Tiger Woods and the hole in one. Right. What they're not seeing yeah. is the... 10,000 hours yeah. of, of trying that it takes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if somebody really wants to hear this this speech and this story, I was the commencement speaker at a college graduation. It's yeah. up on YouTube. I listened Just to that. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. And what came out of the story was every one of my college friends that refused to give up. Yeah. They all had insane dreams, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, the, the, the least attractive gal and theater arts major wanting to be a, a star and she's ended up making more money than any of the pretty faces people know I mean just every single one made it to the top and it wasn't like wow this was the extraordinary class and the planets aligned and you know we were all named Rockefeller or something right. this was just if you don't give up grinding it out if you embrace failing and learn from each step yeah. you'll make it yeah. That's what I love about talking to people like you and hearing this because it's a reminder of you see them on the cover of Forbes or Inc. or whatever, but what it took to get there were all those trying and failing and learning to get to that point. They didn't just end up there, you know, after a year. It's like that 20 year success overnight type of thing. Yeah. And I talk about how to get those big ideas and, and how to, you know, generate the the zombie idea that can't be killed and and there's so much change right now that there are whole areas that nobody has laid a stake on that you could be the best of the world that we know the world's going there it's much like the railroads coming from the east coast to to san francisco okay you know if you buy the land in the middle you're going to get to sell it to a railroad company 
Well, we know what the end state is. You don't have to invent technology. This isn't about just tech businesses. You could do a restaurant. You could do a clothing line. It's about deconstructing the value chain, capturing the value, yeah. understanding how real business works, not some theory that they teach at MBA schools that involves graphs and charts and BS. Yeah, yeah. And, and I encourage anyone to get Disrupt You because there's the practical stuff you're talking about is almost teaching people how they come up with ideas. Like I like you give a lot of examples. I won't go through all of them, but the design one where, you know, Kate Spade didn't invent the purse. They designed it. So you can look at that in any industry. You know, some of the things you're talking about, you can just apply that one concept of design and apply it to any industry or one concept to any of the industries. So I really encourage people to, to check it out. You know, it just makes you think differently. Terrific. Um, on the flip side, Jay, what's been the proudest moment? Proudest moment. Um, you know, when we hit that point from from Net Day and, and the Netathon and everything, that every classroom in the United States was hooked up to the internet, mm -hmm. and that that only took eighteen months and not one dime of taxpayer money. Mm. Yeah, that was an amazing feeling. Uh, when you know. Each time you come up with a wacky idea and it actually happens, you know, uh, I remember sitting in the back of the of the plane when we did the concert at at thirty thousand feet with with Sheryl Crow. You know, the most audacious, insane PR stunt idea ever, and I'm just sitting there, kind of like, yeah, we pulled this off. I mean, it, it's you know, remember to celebrate what you have. The the biggest mistake yeah. entrepreneurs make is they constantly, they grind it every day and they see how far in the future that goal is. Yeah. Stop for a second and look over your shoulder and you'll realize how far you already came. Right. You know, people don't tend to measure that. Yeah. You know, as far as you shoot for the stars, the stars will always be outside of reach. Okay? Right. But, but as long as you're shooting for them, you're getting a lot farther than, you know, this country was was pioneered by by pioneers and and then settled by settlers and I try to tell people stop settling and you know go be a pioneer go explore. So Jay, what was the scene like on that plane? Just describe it for people when you sat back and you're like, wow. Uh, so so the backstory was we were launching a digital download service that needed a PR stunt. What if you could use frequent flyer miles to get songs and all that? And United was coming out of bankruptcy and they needed a thing. And so I had this idea, what do we fill a plane with press, have Sheryl Crow perform a concert, shoot it with nine cameras, edit it on laptops in first class, give everybody a DVD so we can make the evening news. And it all sounds so simple. And Ty Braswell and my team that, that made it all happen. By the time we get to that moment, I'm just sitting. There's, there's nothing for me to do except watch it unfold as you imagined it or better than you imagine it. Yeah. Um, you know, the little things of, by the way, when you change altitude, the strings on a guitar change and this or that. So making an instrument tune to at altitudes is, is a whole thing. Not something all you think little, about. Yeah. yeah, all those little details and stuff. And, you know, would all this equipment interfere with the equipment of a plane and then everybody crashes and dies. So United was required by FAA to, to do a test run with yeah. just my employees. You know, like, you guys don't have to do this. Uh, just, you know, how to do it. How do you let people take, when word leaks out that there's going to be this amazing flight, how do you stop other people from buying tickets on that flight? And nobody could figure out because, you know, the scheduled flight and the plane and everything, they have this massive software. They're not going to change the whole software for us. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you know, every seven years, you know, Tuesday the 1st is Tuesday the 1st. So let's just go seven or 14 years in the future and tell everybody to book their ticket on that flight in 14 years and just put this flight's canceled and then switch it the day of. I mean, all kinds of fun little tricks, but it was cool. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, okay. So Jay, w we've talked about a lot of things. What should we leave people with as far as advice or thoughts moving forward on Disrupt You? So let me get on a soapbox for two seconds. Go ahead. When we look at Ferguson, Baltimore, the problems in Greece, ISIS, these are not problems of race, religion, culture, nationality. These are massive unemployment for those under 30. There are not going to be corporate jobs for 2.3 billion millennials. There won't be corporate jobs in the U.S. for 80 million millennials. If we want 
society to be stable, if we want there to be a middle class, if we want to be able to live in, in, in peace and prosperity, we need to embrace an entrepreneurial spirit as a society and we each need to do it as an individual and collectively solve problems. Mm -hmm. And that's what Disrupt You is all about. It is really taking Occupy Wall Street from I'm against all this to I'm part of the solution. And when you see what teenagers are doing today, what, what the slightest movement that people are able to create and do and the impact that they can have, if that doesn't inspire you, you know, I always ask audiences when I give, give speeches around, are you uh, living life or just paying bills till you die? You know, to me, the purpose of life is to have a life of purpose, to figure out something that you want, some mark you want to make. It doesn't have to be, I built the Taj Mahal. It can be, I raised good kids or, you know, I cleaned up my local river, whatever that you're about. But mm. we, we have only one shot. Why not do the most with it that you can? And if Disrupt You can provide the inspiration, the motivation, the tools that you can apply to just get that much further, you know, rather than have $100,000 in student debt, you can spend $10 and hopefully change the outcome of your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disrupt You, where should people check it out? Where should they go? I have one last question, but tell people where they should check everything out. So it's in bookstores, it's online, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, anywhere that uh, your, your books are sold. It's available in, in audio with my voice. It's available in Kindle. It's available in Chinese, Korean, you know, yeah. wherever your, your audience reaches. Yeah, and they can go to jsamet.com. Also, he spent uh, two full days, over 24 hours, recording the Audible, so you better get it. It's, uh, it's great. Uh, my last question, Jay, is your favorite magic trick and um you've been a magician for for how many years well since i was four years old so yeah. so uh, uh half a century uh i love magic because and, and let me explain why and why it ties into why i think i've been successful as a career that's how i paid my way through college so oh, you know, really? it's still something yeah. something that i perform and enjoy when you go see a singer you want them to sing their best yeah. when you go see a dancer you want them to jump their highest and, and have their best when you go to see a magician, you want them to fail. You want to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. It's the only art form where the audience is against the performer. <laughs> you want to laugh at the comic. Right. You want to see the magician fail. So if you can overcome an audience that is always against you, hmm. changing the I culture, never thought about it a like business, that. making a million dollars, well, that stuff's easy. Well. Going into a boardroom with a, yet another PowerPoint, eh, I'm doing tricks every day. Uh, you know, so, you know, I, I, I love that ability and I love that when there's a kid crying on a plane, I can get him laughing in two seconds by, you know, just putting something in my ear and have it come out my nose. Um, <laughs> you know, there. I don't know if this works on Skype, but there you go. Or the Hollywood version. <laughs> uh, but you know, that's, that's what I've always enjoyed. So for me, that's, yeah. that's my hobby and, and what I spend time with. And as far as favorite trick. Yeah. Uh, what are some of your favorite yeah. ones that you were so proud that you mastered? Um, it's too long of a story, but I'll, I'll do the short version. So yeah. there's, an or, there's an organization called the Magic Castle. Yeah, and very famous. Yeah. All, all the top magicians in the world. And you have to audition to get in. And so in my 20s, it was my goal. Could I get in? Could I be that level, be good enough? But then you stop, and just as I break down every business, I looked at it the same way. I'm not going to do a trick they haven't seen. I'm not going to tell a joke they haven't heard. My hands are not going to be the best mechanic in the world with such skill and dexterity that they will marvel. So how are they going to pick me? Mm. So the only thing left as I started deconstructing it, the same way I teach you to deconstruct business, was intellectual approach. Mm. What if I study the most famous routine that somebody did from a different era and, and show that I so appreciate the art that I do the routine identically, word for word, move for move. Wow. And so cup, Cups and Balls is the oldest magic trick known. And the definitive performer was a contemporary of Houdini named Di Vernon. Di Vernon mastered it. He does, did the best routine. He was amazing. 1930s, nobody could beat him. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do Di Vernon's. Cups and ball routine, exactly. Show up, Magic Castle, go in the basement. There's a bunch of magicians sitting around the table. 
And for the first time in his 92 years, as far as I know, Di Vernon decides to show up to be one of the oh judges. Oh, my God. <laughs> I had never shaken before or been nervous performing magic. So this could have gone one of two ways. Either this guy's ripping off my routine or this guy sucks compared to how I do it. Uh, I couldn't see a good way that this was going, but there was no backup plan. Uh, so six people auditioned that night, and then you go and wait, and they go, you, 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 and then they call the other five guys in, and I'm sitting there in the basement going, like, really? You can't just, like, say something nice to me, you, you know, before I leave, like, try again or something. Just have me sitting here, like, whatever. And what I didn't know is they told the other five guys they didn't make it in, and then they called me in. But, uh, you know, performing that trick for Die yeah. and, you know, may you rest in peace, was, like, really a, a validation of not so much my skill, but the critical thinking that goes into mm. trying to succeed at a goal. Yeah, yeah. So did he say anything, or did they just tell you you're in, or what do they what do they tell you? Yeah, uh, we had some conversations and stuff. And 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 to fast forward uh, this past year, uh, the two Samet boys individually each auditioned. And really? So that so they did take you know. Being in my act when they were little and, and me dragging them to everything, it, it stuck, though. I didn't force it upon them. And uh, one of them did a trick that the panel actually said to him afterwards, we don't know how you did it. Wow. I, we'd never seen it before. He really created something uh, original. So very, very proud that that tradition. What came. was it? Do you know? Um, Not you know how he did boggle? it, but yeah. Do you know the, the game Boggle with the little... Sure. I love that game. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. So he's a Hollywood writer. He writes sitcoms and everything. And what he did a whole routine about writing and, and everything. And he had somebody do the old pick a card. And then he had Boggle. And he shook the Boggle. And when all the cubes fall in place, it then says the three of spades. Wow. The card that the person picked. I, that's amazing. Yeah, mind So can you see some of his stuff on YouTube or anything? Or um, they have anything? Does Benji have tricks up on YouTube? I, I, I should know the answer to that. Uh, I mean, he has, he has other stuff up on yeah. YouTube. No. Jay, a lot of great this has been absolutely fantastic. I could probably talk for hours about magic with you, but um, you're a busy man, so thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, and everybody. Disrupt, disrupt you. you. That's right. Have a good day. Bye. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. Right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.